Okay, now we go to some fundamental question, particularly maybe not for most of you here but today, but uh, I think it's a fundamental question for a lot of people uh, in the company. Uh, because each time you talk about radio, particularly if you are newbie in, uh, in the domain, uh, the first question is always, what range? Well, radio, what range? What is the range of your, of your system? Okay. Um, well, uh, some mathematics, but simple mathematics, even not mandatorily needed to go in the very simple equation, but still, still equation, uh, because we can, we can uh, just use our intuition and, and common sense, I would say. In fact, if you consider that the transmitter is there, it's a certain amount of power or energy that is being radiated, so basically Electrical, engine, electrical energy which is transformed into electromagnetic energy, okay? And indeed, as it is propagating, the energy of the electromagnetic wave is going to spread out. And um, if we consider that the medium we are using, for instance, free space or the uh, atmosphere, whatever, is, um, um, I don't remember the term, but uh, homogeneous, uh, is an homogeneous uh, medium. In fact, uh, it's going at the same speed in all directions. So basically, the propagation uh, surface wave uh, is uh, propagating over spheres. Um, and a signal that has been produced here, after a certain time, is going to spread over the surface of this sphere. Okay. Uh, so you clearly see that if you consider that a receiving antenna, I don't know if you, I don't know if you, I'm not sure you see this little gray surface, but this little gray surface, let's say it's the inter um, interception uh, surface of the antenna. It's what we call the equivalent surface of the antenna. Uh, indeed, the biggest, the largest is the surface, the, the better is the antenna. The, the more powerful is the antenna. Uh, this little antenna might not have a big surface, but the Arecibo uh, big antenna or the 500 meter uh, spherical uh, Chinese antenna has a big surface, as you can imagine. Okay? Uh, anyway, whatever is the surface, let's call it SA, surface of the antenna, and S is the surface of the sphere. It's obvious with minimal mathematical knowledge that, in fact, the energy which is uh, going through the surface of the antenna is proportional to the square of the distance because it's like um, a bubble. If you make a bubble with a chewing gum, it's a certain quantity of material that you are going to spread out over the bubble the quantity of material has not been changing. It's always the same quantity of material. So the bigger is your bubble, the thinner is going to be uh, the, your bubble. <laughs> so that's exactly the same for the transmission. So basically, the fundamental law for free space, and I'm saying free space, okay, is this one. The loss which is related to the received power, but uh, to be to simplify, let's go, let's talk about the loss, is dependent on the distance and also the frequency for another story, but uh, also the frequency through lambda, which is the wavelength, we'll come back on that, squared. But the most important thing to keep in mind here is that the, the in fact, the minimal, minimal loss in the best propagation environment, which is there is nothing, it's a free space propagation, is dependent on the square of the distance. So basically, if you double the distance, uh, you increase the loss from the transmitter, whatever it was at a distance d, at distance 2d, 2 times d, you have increased the loss by 4, 2 squared. 
uh, if you increase the distance by 10, you've increased the loss by 100, etc., etc., etc. Okay? Which, for those who are manipulating dB, means that if you increase the distance by 2, so basically you decrease, you increase the loss or you decrease the receive power by 4, it's 6 dB. Okay? Uh, you increase by 10 the distance, you increase by 100 the, the loss, you increase by 20 dB the loss. Okay? It cannot be below that. That's the minimum, minimum curve of, um, um, uh, how to say, of, of decrease of the power over distance. In fact, in reality, it's much more complex and it's much more than the square of the distance, unfortunately. But in space, it works. Um, and, and I said also that it's dependent on the frequency. So by the way, just as a reminder, uh, we would have made Sigfox at 2.4 gigahertz. We would have had a penalty of 8.8 .8 dB on the budget link, just by using a frequency that would have been uh, 7.6 uh, times greater than 868, or a wavelength that would have been 7.6 uh, uh, times uh, smaller than uh, the wavelengths we have at uh, 868 something megahertz. Okay? Uh, in reality, uh, most of the time, at least uh, for Sigfox, we are interested in uh, terrestrial propagation. We are not. Uh, we are not uh, listening, we are not sens sending uh, sense it uh, in the space. Yeah. So our purpose is really to operate our system on Earth. Okay? So far. Uh, <laughs> so not entering into too much detail, once again. Um, we can consider that what we call the line of sight is the closest condition to free space loss. Okay? And line of sight means that you are not in free space, but at least you have a transmitting or receiving antenna that's the same, but let's say it's a transmitting antenna, which is over the ground at a certain altitude. And because it is in altitude, it has a certain area of kind of free space, almost free space, not exactly, but almost free space. There is no obstacles. And it's always interesting to calculate this line of sight uh, surface or distance because you might be at least as close as possible to the free space uh, propagation, particularly if your antenna is very high. Okay? And in fact, uh, it's a very simple Pythagore uh, calculation. Okay? You have a triangle, which is a, a square triangle. So basically, uh, well, uh, you will make the calculation. I'm uh, not going to spend time on that. In the end, using the Pythagore theorem, you end up with um, a distance that you might expect uh, to be able to reach, uh, which is, after simplification, and, and, uh, which is in, in 3.75 uh, square root of the altitude of the antenna uh, compared to the ground level. Okay? Uh, you will uh, redo the, the math, and it's very simple. In practice, um, it's a little bit more than that because the waves are not, on, in fact, are not totally propagating in, uh, in, in a line. There are some effects of distortion of the direction because of the atmosphere. So in fact, you go, if you don't have obstacles, in pure line of sight communication. So basically, it works well for a plane. Okay? But at the, in a car within a city, it's not working. Uh, we'll come back on that. Uh, so in the line of, uh, line of sight condition, it's going a little bit far than the geometric uh, math assumption because of this distortion of the, of the propagation. And you can use this number, 4.1. Some are saying it's 4.12, some are saying it's 4.80 something. It's not very important. It's a little bit more than this one. You could even use 4, it's not a problem. Okay? 
keep that in mind. It's a, it's a first ID of what could be the range in, once again, line of sight. Uh, so there are some examples, I guess. So for instance, for uh, an antenna that would be two meters above the ground, you can expect to have a distance of, with no obstacle, of uh, 5.8 kilometers. Uh, 10 meters, 13 kilometers, etc., etc. For an aircraft, which is a commercial aircraft that would be at 10,000 meters, which is uh, how much in, in feet, by the way? Because it's always in feet that they are uh, exchanging the altitude. 30, 30, 33 something, yeah. which is le the level uh, 330. Uh, three, 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 uh, it's somehow like uh, 400 kilometers. In fact, it, at high altitude, it can be a little bit more than that because the effect of propagation distortion um, is a little bit bigger. So in fact, it's not rare that you, can, you could reach if you have enough power to counteract the distance, uh, so to counteract the free space loss. If you have enough power to counteract it, uh, you could go a little bit far. And by the way, counteracting the free space loss, because the free space loss is still there in the line of sight. So if you are at two meters, so you can expect to go up to 5.8 kilometers because of the geometry of Earth, uh, you would need at least one microwatt to go over there. If you have one microwatt, you can expect to go with no obstacles, you can expect to go um, at this distance. Okay? Uh, for the 10,000 meter altitude, you will need at least five milliwatts. That's why, by the way, uh, a Sigfox device is able to communicate at a few hundred kilometers, up to probably 1,000 kilometers, in an aircraft. Okay? We have enough power to counteract uh, the free space uh, loss. But, once again, in fact, uh, as you know, it's mo much more complex than that in, in reality, in real life. In real life, and we are not going to spend too much time on that, and we make the pause, I guess, um, just after. Uh, in reality, you have a lot of obstacles. Okay? Uh, some of you know that because of the buildings and so on and so on. In fact, the, it, there is no line of sight propagation. It's very, very uncommon that you might have line of sight in terrestrial communication. So it means that uh, it's very difficult to predict the range. That's why I'm always saying, when something, somebody is asking to me what is range, I'm often answering, well, between 500 meters and 50 kilometers. And they look at me, is it yet or what? But in reality, uh, that's the fact. Uh, it's very, very difficult to predict uh, the range, and it depends on the environment. So it's very different from open rural, rural, semi-urban, urban, urban or uh, EV urban, and even worse than that, uh, probably buried application. Okay, now we, we're going to start uh, the fun part uh, of uh, the presentation. So we've been talking about all the basics, the range, and so on. Uh, we're going to start some uh, experiments. Okay. To do that, uh, I'm seeing that we are going to build. In fact, it's already built. Uh, I've been making a small uh, pedagogic uh, transmitter, which is basically composed of an oscillator. So to, to do that, I've been using a, a computer a crystal oscillator, a very simple, uh, uh, I would say, a DGK or whatever, Mauser uh, crystal oscillator. But I've been adding uh, an attenuator. The goal of the attenuator is that it's making, I could have used an amplifier, but uh, it's much better to have uh, uh, an attenuator, particularly because I want to have extremely reduced power here. So it's better to use an attenuator. Uh, and uh, one of the other purpose of the attenuator is to bufferize uh, the oscillator um, uh, against the antenna effect. So if I have a condition which is changing here, uh, it's like if the oscillator is not seeing what happens because of the uh, attenuator. So I'm trying to isolate uh, the electrical part of the transmitter. I'm trying to isolate the generator from where I'm going to play, which is the antenna. Okay? 
And I have a supply, indeed, uh, which is a battery, and a very simple, very, very simplistic uh, power control, which is basically a potentiometer. Okay? We are going to use an SDR receiver to make some measurements. And the frequency uh, is quite low for two reasons. One is that uh, the crystal oscillator uh, I found well, is working on a low frequency. But it's, it's much better because it allows me to have a, a larger wavelength so that it's, uh, my experimentation is going to be much, much more stable than if I would work at uh, 2.4 gigahertz or uh, even 1 gigahertz. At 1 gigahertz, the wavelength is quite small. So I could myself have very quickly an effect on the experiment because of the wavelengths. The greater is the, is the wavelength, so basically the smaller is the frequency, the less I'm having effect on the transmitter, on the system of transmission. Uh, the transmitter is there, and I'm going to use some of you. So that's the transmitter. You can see uh, the battery, <laughs> uh, the crystal oscillator, there is the attenuator over there. There are some components we're going to use later on. And uh, there is a socket for an antenna, uh, which is either a BNC, either uh, something, so that I can screw some form of radiator, potentially, I hope, antenna, on the, on the transmitter. OK? So the first thing to do is to start the receiver. And the first basic experiments we are going to do are related to range. What kind of range can we obtain? So far, uh, the pot potentiometer is trimmed so that the output on the connector, as it is not using those components, so with a direct output from the attenuator to the uh, antenna socket, uh, with a power which under 50 ohm is um, 10 nanowatt. Okay? So this device is outputting 10 nanowatt here, which is how many uh, dBms? Minus 50 dBms. Okay? Minus 50. So it's not, um, it's not an easy power. It's a very, very small power. And it's not radiating in other parts of the, of the board. It's, the radiation is there. All the parasitic radiation for the, for the experts all the parasitic radiation are much smaller. So we, we are sure that we have 50, uh, 50 dBm, minus 50 dBm, so, so to say 10 nanowatts here. So let's start the receiver, uh, which is, um, uh, which is, which is, which is, no, that's not what I need to do. I need to switch off from the presentation. OK. So we're going to tune the receiver <coughs> at 77.74 uh, megahertz. <laughs> uh, this is a French gendarmerie transmission, for your information. Uh, it's a digital, let me change the bandwidth. It's a digital transmission, GMSK digital transmission. Just for fun, if you want to hear about it, uh, you are not to, going to hear a lot of things. You have decoded the message? No? <laughs> yeah. uh, my transmitter, I don't, well, the, the distance is very small, so we might see it. Here it is. Okay. Just, oh yes, indeed, I oh, can do that. Okay, you see a small line, a small line. I'm going to put it in steady state. And maybe, so you see that it's a very small power. Ah, no, I have to do something. A small, very small modification. So is there. By the way, you see when, I, when I'm putting my finger 
on the antenna socket, something happens, right? It's a little bit stronger. Um, so we have our signal, here it is, and we see some trace of the signal, but it's not very, it's not very strong. By the way, we would use an FM demodulator on it. Do we have a, a clean reception? So basically, a clean reception for FM is when you have the disappearance of the click phase. And I guess that in this case, we have a bunch of phase click. So basically, we are receiving nothing. Okay? And you see the range, huh? it's uh, 30 centimeters. Um, so we can say that from an FM frequency modulation service, it's not working. Okay? But I might use another demodulator. For instance, a coherent single sideband demodulator. Do we hear something? I'm hearing because I'm used to hear, but most of you might not hear. If we do that, You can hear it. There is presence of signal or no presence. So indeed, the fact of receiving the signal or not depends on how you tune your system. What kind of demodulation, what kind of bandwidth you are using, OK? So if we want to experiment on range, we need also to consider and we will come back on that indeed later, we, you need to consider what kind of receiver you are going to use. So what kind of system you are going to use. But you've seen also that uh, depending on what I'm doing on the transmitter, we see or not the signal. So we're going to put some form of antenna. <coughs> I don't know if this antenna is working properly or not, but there is something. And I'm starting the transmitter. Uh, and indeed, you might understand why I'm using a buffer, because you see that the frequency is slightly changing depending on what I'm doing on the antenna. It's not a perfect transmitter. Huh? It's a quick and dirty pedagogic transmitter. OK, so you see that it seems that my antenna is may not optimized. You see? Without my hands, difficult to see. By the way, there is a lot of noise. Uh, you see the power in the receiving window, which is, and my receiver is calibrated, which is 92 dBm, which is, which is a bunch. It's a, a big power. It's not the normal noise floor, the natural noise floor. Why? Because of this, because of this, because of this. So because of all the electricity that we have around us, computer, whatever, all those change in electrical states, it's radiating energy, it's radiating waves, and it is polluting my band. If I want to have a clean reception with the almost natural noise, I have to put this device and the antenna on the roof, and even maybe on the roof, I might, might have some uh, surprise. So it would be better to go into Pyrenees on the top of a hill with nobody, and then you would have a noise closer to minus 130 dBm. So here you have uh, for more than 40 dB penalty of noise, of artificial noise around us. 
This is also something very important to keep in mind. So we are reducing our, we will see later, budget link, so our capability to go far by 40 dB, which is a multiplication factor or division of 10,000. We are 10,000 less efficient than we should do if my antenna environment was clean. Anyway, we have noise, we do with it, and we have the signal which is there, which is very, very small signal. So what is the range we can obtain? Well, at least we, we see that we can obtain 40, 50 centimeters. Uh, and you see that, funnily, it, it's, it seems to be better there. Because, in fact, it's so low power that you can see the effect. There is absolutely no saturation, for sure. You can see the effect of having my small radiator. I'm not saying antenna for now. My small radiator there, or there, or there. So depends on how I present. You can also you can look at the uh, indeed at the, the Dirac here, but you can also look at the monitoring uh, uh, device, which is also very efficient to judge about about the power. By the way. Uh, each time you increase the number by, by one, you add plus one, you add six dB on this uh, monitoring device. And it's very well calibrated, believe me. So, okay, we can go up to, if we put the antenna in the right direction, we can go up to uh, two meters. Hmm, we still see it. <laughs> it's a little bit more difficult, but let's try anyway to optimize our reception if I have access to my trimming stuff. Um, still there, no? Right, and if we put some Averaging, yes, it's there. So changing my condition of reception, so changing the, the processing of my receiver, you see that I'm able to put some emphasis on the signal. Okay. So by doing this, I'm reducing the bandwidth of the analyzer, of the signal analyzer. And because I'm reducing the bandwidth, I'm seeing the signal that if I'm applying another parameter, it's, it's over. With a 23 hertz of resolution bandwidth, the signal is lost. Okay? But with sub 1 hertz condition, well, really sub 1 hertz, huh? with a sub 1 hertz condition, well, mm, we see something. Okay, good. Um, so we have a transmitter which is a three, four meter transmitter with a quite sensitive receiver. Well, sensitive, uh, in fact, it would be much more than that because remember, there is a lot of noise on the antenna. So we would, we would be in the Pyrenees with the PC far from the receiver. For sure, it, it would be much farther than that, even though it's close to uh, as I said, 10 nanowatt. Okay. Um, so I think that for the time being, that's okay. We are going to continue. Thank you. We're going to progress. Back to the presentation. Uh, so it's a first very simple experiment on range. Okay. Thank <laughs> you.